for the trusts shown what is the force in each member of the truss and state if the members are in tension or compression. This is the first example for the truss's main lecture video. The link to that video and other examples are linked in the description below. As mentioned during that video, some trusses problems will require us to calculate the reaction forces first. But in other cases, we can start by using the method of joints and start at a joint where the external loads are applied to. If in this case we begin at joint D and assume all internal forces to be in tension, like suggested during the main video, we see that a sum of forces in X allows us to solve for FDE. Because of the negative sign, we know that member D is subjected to compression. A sum of forces in the Y direction would allow us to solve for FDC. Notice that even though we know FDE is negative and therefore DE is under compression, since the vector is pointing to the bottom left side of the screen and therefore its Y component is negative, that term is negative in the sum of forces in Y. As mentioned in the main video, it's all about consistency. After being done with joint D, we have two options, joint E or joint C. At joint E, we would have four forces of which only one is known. In contrast, at joint C, we find three forces of which one is known, which leaves us two unknown variables, which is perfect for the two equations that we find from the sum of forces, one in X and one in Y. Therefore, our next step is joint C. From a sum of forces in X, we find the value for FCE, a compression force, and from the sum of forces in Y, we find FCB, a tensile force. Finally, at joint E, we can write the sum of forces in X and Y and substitute the known values, knowing that FED and FDE have the same magnitude and there's no need to add a negative sign because the vector directions are taking care of that to find a system of two equations and two unknowns. Multiplying the first one by 5 thirds and the second one by 5 over 4, we see that by adding them together, FEB cancels out and FEA can be solved for, and by subtracting 2 from 1, we can solve for FEB. With the values for all internal forces, we see the members that are in compression and the members that are in tension, which kind of makes sense when looking at the external loads of 600 and 900 newtons. Notice once again that in this problem, we didn't need to solve for the reaction forces at A and B. Being able to identify that from the beginning will save you considerable amount of time. For more examples on trusses, including some where you do have to find those reaction forces, as well as the links to the main lectures of statics course, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.